Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the formatting of an APA uh, version 7 paper. Um, the big difference between uh, APA 6 and 7th edition, which was released in October of 2019, um, is that there's now a student format and a professional format. So if you are in high school or college or university and you're not being published as an author, then you would use the student format, which is what we're going to go over today. So there's four parts to the student format. There's the title page, there's the abstract, which is a brief summary and review of your research. There is the main body page, and then there is the references page. So we're going to start with just a plain Word document in the default settings. So as you can see, it defaults to this font. Personally, I always like to use Times New Roman size 12, but with APA, there is a variety of fonts that you can use. Um, I always use the Purdue OWL site, which is the on online writing lab. Um, it is fantastic. I will link it below. So um, that's really where I get a lot of my information. The great thing about Purdue is that it's very specific. And the difficult thing about APA is that it's very specific. So the first thing we're going to do for our title page is we're going to center our text. Okay. Now the title of your paper goes three lines in. So we're going to go one, two, three, enters. We're going to put our writing in bold. Okay. And we are going to write the title of paper. Okay, and that goes in bold. So the next thing you're going to want to do is hit enter twice. Okay, and you're going to unbold. And this is where your information goes. But we need to fix the lining and spacing. So we are going to double space our work. Okay. Hang on, let's go back up there. Let's double space and let's hit enter twice. There we go. Now we have the right amount of space. So you are going to write your name. You are going to write the department for which you are writing the paper. And then the academic institution. So whatever school you're working with or the university, the college, whatever. You are going to write the course name. Okay, so ideally, if you are in college, you'll have a course number as well, right? So you're going to want your course number, colon, and then the course name. Um, if you are just in high school and you are writing just a paper, then you are just using the course name. And then finally, you are going to write your teacher's name. Remember, if you are in college or university and your teacher has a PhD, to include that doctor in there. Okay? It's very important. And then finally, you are going to write the date. Now, the date has a very specific um, format. So you're going to do the month abbreviated. Okay? You are going to do the date, comma, space, year. Okay, and that is the outline of your information. The last thing that your um, cover page needs is a page number. So you're going to go insert page number. It goes in the top right. But what you are going to find is that it will revert back to the default font, which means you need to go back in and change it back to the font that you are using. Okay, and that number goes in the top of the cover page and the top of every other page, so you're good to go. Okay, so this is all that goes on the cover page for a student APA paper. You're going to hit control enter, go to the next page, you'll see your page numbers are still there. Now the title of your paper 
goes in bold again at the top of the page. That's your first heading. Okay. Because an APA headings are layered. Now you're going to unbold and you're going to do one enter. That's it. You don't need to hit enter seven times. You don't need to start halfway down the page. Just one enter. Double check that you're still in double space. You're good to go. And you're going to start writing your paper. Okay. Um, check out my other video. I'll link it on the um, citations and APA for more information about the writing process. But in terms of um, formatting, okay, this is your first heading. Okay, now if you have different sections of your paper, which really helps for organization, your second heading, okay, so like if you, let's say we're writing a paper on autism and you wanted to, your first um, heading was, um, for example, paper I'm writing, the power of play in autism, your first heading may be um, types of play, right? So your first heading is in bold. Sorry, your first heading is in bold at the middle. Your second level heading, okay, is in bold, but off to the side. Okay, so we're not indenting, we're not doing anything here. Your third level heading would be off to the side still, no indent, and in bold and italics. And if you get so far that you need a fourth level, you hit tab once, okay, and it's just in bold. Your fourth level heading with a period. And the important part about this one is that your text starts on the same line. Okay. And then if you go back to the beginning, you can, you can continue writing your paper. Okay. One important thing I forgot to mention is if your um, word doesn't automatically lay out normally, you need to make sure your margins are one inch margins. They're normal 2.54 centimeters if you function in centimeters and not inches. Okay, it is super obvious to teachers when you uh, play with the margins. So I highly suggest against it. Okay. So that's the, the title of your paper, okay? So if you do have an abstract, which is not super common in um, student papers, but it would go above your um, body of the paper, okay? So you would be centered, oops, not sure what happened there. You would be centered, put your title of abstract, and write it there. So if that's a requirement for your specific paper, you would do the title page, your abstract, and then on a completely new page, you would write the body of the paper. Okay, so if abstract is necessary, that's where it goes in. But if it's not, you go straight to the body of the paper. Now, the fourth section is the references part. And this part can be quite difficult to navigate. Okay, so what you need to do, again, you're going to center, you're going to bold, and you are going to write references. If you only have one reference, you only write reference. Okay, it's only references if you have multiple. And that is the fourth part of the paper. Remember, I said at the beginning, you have the title page, the abstract, the body, and the reference. So you can see. Those are all the titles that are at the top of the page and centered. Okay, so you need to make sure it's a new page. Now, references can be quite difficult. Okay, I'm going to link down below how to do the formatting for the different ones. Um, you can also use the Purdue OWL website. I have 
a document already with them formatted, uh, sorry, not formatted, written, just so I can show you how to do the formatting. So this is what it'll look like after you finish writing your references. It could be very confusing, I know, um, but with baby steps, you can get there. So the important thing about references in APA is they have to go in alphabetical order. Now to do that, you would click on paragraph, okay? On the A to Z, okay? And you need to make sure it sorts by paragraph there, okay? Um, and you wanna go in ascending order, meaning A to Z, and you click okay. And as you can see, I don't know why I put an extra space there because Word does that, but it is now in alphabetical order according to the last name of the different sources. The next thing we need to do is put them in double space, just like the rest of our paper. Now this last section is always the most complicated for students. References page pages need what we call a hanging indent. There's a reason for it and I'll explain it once we get there because it's a lot easier to see once we get there. So in Word, you click on paragraph. Under indentation, you click on special. Now you don't want the first line indented, you want a hanging indent. So it is right here, hanging. You click, click OK, and it will indent all of the other lines except for the first one. Because if you reference Ginsburg in your paper and I want to say, oh, I want to see what article that is, it is a lot easier for me to scroll through the last names looking for what I'm looking for than it is for me to read through paragraphs. Okay, so it's a very important part of the formatting. Okay, so let's just go through one more time. We have one inch margins. Okay, we have Times New Roman size 12. If you want another font, go see what, what else is acceptable um, in APA. There are other options. Arial is another option. You have your page numbers in the top right corner. You have your title of your paper, three enters down in bold. You enter twice, right? Your name, your department and the institution, the course number and the course name, your teacher's name, the date in the right format, the month abbreviated, the day, and the year. On a new page, you have abstract in bold at the, centered at the top if it's required. You have the third section, which is the main body of the page. You have the title in bold at the top. You can start writing immediately. And then you have the different kinds of headings that you may want to include in your paper. Keep in mind, headings are not necessarily mandatory in research papers, but they really help with the organizational process. Okay, um, and then so your paper goes on as long as it needs to. And everything is in double space. Okay, and then the last part, the references part. Okay, so you have references at the top centered in bold because it is a first level heading, right? Just like the title, the abstract, it's all first level headings. You still have your page numbers, you have the sources written according to APA citations. You have them in alphabetical order. You have your hanging indent, okay? And they are in double spaced. It doesn't matter if the page before references only has two lines on it, you start on a new page for references, okay? So that's the basics of formatting an APA um, seventh edition. Uh, research paper for students. Um, like I said, I'll post the link to the Purdue OWL site for more information. Um, they also have examples and stuff like that for a little bit more details, um, especially if you include stuff like uh, figures and charts and stuff like that. They require a little bit more. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, what I like to do is make a template, um, save it as a blank one, and then keep reusing the same document over and over again. Um, just to make a formatting process a little bit easier for me, especially if you're using different kinds of citations. Um, but if you're using APA, that's the basics of it. Thanks. Have a great day.